Hi, and welcome to the premiere episode of season eight of The Journal. Sorry for the delay, folks. Uh, we've been having some technical difficulties, um, but we'll get right back into it. The Journal is an eight-part series filled with informative and entertaining stories. I'm Kevin Xconde. Today, we'll be looking at, a very, at various walks of life. We will meet a Guitar Hero fanatic, as well as a collector of some spectacular glowing rocks. I'm Alex Young. We will also have a special Olympic segment, three stories, one featuring Jenna Gert, a former Olympic gymnast, the other featuring Crispin Duenas, a current Olympic archer, and thirdly, our reporter Chris Spatafora will let us in on his opinion of the Olympic Games. This week, we will also be joined by talented guitarist and singer Laura Scott Lewis, uh, and also the, the Wrecking Crew, which is an improv group who performs on the Danforth at a coffee shop every Friday night. But first, let's look into a more serious issue, the current economic crisis. With layoffs and bankruptcy rising at a rapid pace, everyone is feeling the effects, and some small businesses may not be able to make it through these tough times. Journal reporter Candace Lecca visited some local restaurants to find out just how much the current state of the economy is affecting their business. It's been almost a year now, and the reality has pretty much set in. We're in a slowdown. Many restaurants are quietly going out of business, and down on the Danforth, I met with a couple Greek restaurant owners to see what they had to say about the recent economy. Astoria Shish Kebab House, and I've been here for 10 years. I'm one of the owners of the restaurant, and my favorite thing is to be hands-on and, and deal with people every day, different types of people in the environment. We've seen slowdowns through the Monday and Thursday uh, business. Regular diners, we find, instead of coming two or three times a week, are not coming once or twice. This is the Greek Grill. I've been working here for the past 15 years. It's very bad. Usually, this time of the year, the business are down every year regardless of the economy. But because of the uh, economy, it's getting worse than it was uh, like every year. They're afraid to spend. It's tough, but it's when it's family owned, and especially here, it's not only family, it's where our partners, five partners. We put all the effort and uh, a lot of work, seven days a week, 12 to 14 hours a day and that's the only way to survive. We've, uh, we've cut back on hours, uh, labor hours, of course, is one of your biggest things to cut down on. So we've done that, and of course, ordering less product you know, on the less busier days as well, so it's helped us quite a bit. If the economy continues, it's gonna be tough to afford the rent that we paid. We have a high rent on uh, Danford. The media usually, again, blows things up a bit more um, than usual. I think they have made a bit more of a bit of a hype than it really is. I hope it's not, it's not gonna continue like they say. But the people already, they're scared to spend. They're scared, they don't know what they, it's gonna be the next day, if they have a job or not. So things will tell in, uh, in time. Welcome back. It's unfortunate that all these small businesses, uh, long-running businesses, uh, are affected so greatly by the state of the economy. We can only hope that things will turn around in the near future. Now let's switch to a lighter note. Our next story focuses on Elliot Rudner, a true guitar hero and also uh, well-known in the elite gaming world. Elliot is a hardcore gamer and has his own guitar hero-based podcast. He's even been flown to LA to test unreleased game material. Let's find out just what it takes to rise to the top of the guitar hero world. On November 8, 2005, a product was released that changed the music business forever. No, it wasn't a new instrument or even recording gear. It was a video game. A video game called Guitar Hero. Basically what Guitar Hero is, is you have a plastic guitar and you have notes coming down vertically. 
uh, towards the bottom of the screen. What you have to do is you have to strum and hit the right color at the right time. This is Elliot Fredner, a Guitar Hero pioneer. For Elliot, Guitar Hero isn't just a game, it's a lifestyle. I used to go to York University um, and play Guitar Freaks for a dollar and used to fantasize about buying uh, the guitar on eBay uh, so I could play it at home. And you know, we talked to her like I was young, like we didn't have credit cards. We're like, oh, we'll get my dad to buy it and we'll like play it all day and then we'll go to the arcade and we'll like, well, like there used to be like these Japanese guys that came like with leather jackets. They would just like rock the game. And I was like, oh, I want to be that good at it. Like I want to play on expert double speed and stuff like that. And that had just never happened. And then one day I was looking on the internet, I see like Guitar Hero. I'm like, yes, finally, finally I get this game. Elliot has been playing Guitar Hero ever since the first version and has become well known over the web for his vast knowledge of the game and his popular Guitar Hero podcast. Yeah, definitely, definitely deterred most of the rock band vocal community from even playing the game, seeing as how I'm still ranked like 16th. I mean, come on. <laughs> right, right, yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense, and, you know, for the most part, it's... I think what separates Guitar Hero from any game out there is there's a kind of a musical application of it, despite how people will comment on videos, you know, play a real guitar, or this would be impressive if it was a real guitar. The, the skill sets, I guess, that come with being good at the game are a good sense of rhythm, uh, finger dexterity, a certain amount of, I guess, like uh, reflexes. Also, one thing that it does is uh, with the downloadable content, it exposes people to new music they never even would have thought of listening to anymore. And at a time where, in my opinion, the music industry is pretty, there's some really bad stuff being put out there on mainstream, it's actually now the video games that are kind of saving rock and roll. The biggest accomplishment not related to, um, I guess, points in the game is that because of my, you know, involvement oh, in the no, community, uh, Neversoft, Red Octane actually flew me out to play Guitar Hero World Tour in LA, which was pretty cool uh, to play it before everyone. And I gave some, we all gave feedback, like uh, myself and the Score Hero moderators and um, my fellow podcast host, uh, Frankie. Yeah, it's a plastic toy and you know, we're playing, but it's fun. And people like to have fun. And you know what? Not everyone needs to play real guitar. It's not some rule that like that everyone needs to be a musician. I mean, I saw one comment where it was like, you know, why don't you play real guitar and like it'll be like more rewarding. And so, no, I'm a gamer. I'm not a musician. You know, just like straight up. It's like not everyone needs to play real guitar. And if people are worried that Guitar Hero and Rock Band is destroying like music industry and all the kids are not gonna wanna play real guitar, they're just gonna sit on the couch and like be instantly gratified, I guess by playing these games, they're wrong. If they didn't if they wanna play real guitar, they'll play real guitar. If they don't wanna play real guitar, they'll play Guitar Hero. Elliot continues to play Guitar Hero as much as he can. Not for glory or for popularity, but for the sheer love of the game. And that's something we can all atone to. For The Journal, this is Stephen Dawson.